you may have guessed, I don't speak Russian. I've been in Russia once before, sort of 25 years ago. I can tell you it was a long hitch, hitchhike ride to spend some time with the Russian uh, national spade skating team. But I guess we have all done, done all sorts of awkward things when we were young. So nowadays, I tend to be very uh, forward looking, uh, as Igor was saying, uh, when it comes to things like technology, regulation, market acceptance. And that's where I help my clients in the Middle East, Europe and uh, America with. I'm going to talk about sort of cloud-based ATMs, the futures and I, uh, that started off with a piece of research I did for the ATM Industry Association last year, which actually got a lot of good uh, feedback. Um, and I've, I've sort of walked through the concept I positioned there, the sort of feedback I had from a number of large banks. Uh, and all this has resulted in, uh, in, in more study, more investigations. Um, it, it's probably the best thing to say there's a lot of things that cloud ATMs can, can deliver to the efficiency when it comes to hard and software uh, for yourselves. Uh, and I think the industry, I'll also tell you at the end, I think how the industry is moving to, to actually get there because it's obviously it's a complex uh, beast. So when I started my research for the ATM Industry Association, uh, they said, well, it gives a forward looking view, I think, how ATMs look like in, in sort of 10 years from now. What sort of hardware will it be, the software? Is it going to be cloud-based? And I think also, I think, come with some views on, on things like uh, the so-called headless ATMs, ATMs that you just operate from your mobile phone and don't have the big screen any longer. Well, that's, I thought that was a tough call to answer, but I, I had a go at it. And I thought, you know what, let me have a look at, uh, let me start with the past. So I, I drew up an ATM, and I thought, what would someone sort of half my age, just graduated from doing IT stuff, uh, how would they look at it? And they probably say, you know what? It's PC-based, you've got lots of components in there, which actually are in tablets today. So you have displays, you have cameras, I'm not sure about receipt printers, it sounds a bit 80s to me, uh, but things like keypads, that all can be done in, in, in a tablet. So perhaps one way of looking at it is to say, you know what, we'll have one tablet that covers with the, um, the application interface, and then I think you simply let that dialogue with the cash dispenser, and then I think the best thing is sort of to, to, to use Internet of Things technology, where you send just a message to an IP address, and that message could, for example, be, please open the sugar and dispense some cash, uh, rather than the, this, the, the whole situation today that we got with um, device drivers that make things sort of very complex for the, uh, for the, for the ATM operators. So that, that was sort of the line of thing that I put forward. And then, obviously, what, what does it mean for hardware? Well, I've been sort of extracting, rationalizing components, and you can easily say, you know what, I'm going to stick the tablet on a case. Uh, and that would be the ATM. This is probably the, the time to thank uh, Ukra the, the Ukrainian private bank for making this picture available to me, because it's an actual device that I sort of photoshopped a bit. But we can also say, let's have a simple cash dispenser, and let's not let's not physically integrate the sort of the user interface. So you can simply say then, I've got a gas dispenser here, I've got a, the user interface there. Uh, you can segregate it, and that also allows you to sort of use, use the uh, of dry the transaction from a mobile device. By doing that, it also paves the way for new ways to deploy ATMs. You can easily say, well, if there are supermarkets where you have self-checkout, Perhaps you can, have, you can have the sort of the user interface there, and that can also then drive sort of uh, the moment you've checked out, you can actually say, do you want some cash back? And then the ATM sort of can dispense cash. So there's a lot of new thinking that's possible when, once this technology is endorsed. So I had some practical feedback. Uh, people said to me, well, you use a tablet for pen entry. Um, apparently, the German regulator, I think, does not approve of such a thing, I guess. Um, I guess I think some other may, may join them, um, but I think there's no need. You can still, I think, have, for example, the, uh, a pin pad working with this concept. Um, some other practical feedback was about tablets. Obviously, we don't want to have the sort of the $50 uh, solution PC world. We probably need something that's, that's uh, industry proof and reliable to being outside for quite a long time. So I got a lot of good feedback, and I'll sort of touch base on that. Um, by give, giving some examples some of what are the pain points in the industry today, at least what do some of the banks perceive the pain points. Now, one of the big challenges that the industry is facing is, is to do around uh, Windows operating systems. So I, think, I, I presume that most of you have recently moved to Windows 7. Um, 
and have done the thing from XP. I think if you're st still on XP, I think I'm not sure what you're doing. Uh, but then I think the, whatever happens, Windows 10 is looming. Windows 7 is sort of out of date in, in, in three or four years from now. So I had a look at alternative solutions, and it's fair to say there's no good alternative to, uh, to the Windows solution. So there's Linux deployment in Brazil. That's still an ATM-based PC. Um, sorry, PC-based ATM. Thank you for uh, staying with me. Um, two deployers, probably 20, 25% of the marketplace. I spoke with a th third one that actually said, yeah, we like the concept of Linux. The, the banks seem to do a lot. They can do a lot of things. However, there's always the question when you come with a new pin pad or a new component, where's the device driver? Um, so that's been around for 15 years, and it's sort of cabling along, I would say. There's a lot of Windows um, CE, but that's an embedded solution deployed in the US and Canada for the retail environments. Um, I know you do sort of 100,000 things on your ATMs. You've got lots of applications that those are hard to replicate if you don't use, um, if, if you have an embedded solution. Because then you're sort of, you've got to have the software solution from your hardware vendor. Now, there's some deployment uh, in India of, of Linux, but that's all um, embedded as well. And that's typically for the Indian market where they, have, they want to have low maintenance uh, ATMs. They don't want to send the engineers too often down to ATMs uh, simply because the roads aren't unreliable and that. So um, Android is up and coming, but I think I'll, I'll probably sta state something I'll repeat later on. It's coming, but there are no standards for that. So the, the, the big manufacturers are endorsing it. Uh, there's no big deployment. No markets have taken up. In my view, I think we can uh, change it if we start standardizing. So. The thing, what the comment I had, if we have something that's sort of tablet-based, OS-based, um, we all, I think, change OSs on our, on our tablets probably every, every year, I would imagine. It's a s simple process. You rely less by descoping the sort of complexity. You rely less on, on sort of the computing power. And you can easily keep, keep, on, um, keep on using it. So one of the banks actually commented, and they said, well, even if we have to replace a, um, a tablet when we do an operating system upgrade, on the looks of it, I think it's, it's a matter of, of sort of, um, a screw, well, unscrew the, uh, the, the tablet, um, unscrew some, uh, undo the cables, and put the new one back in place. And that sort of should be a 10, 15 minute job, even for me with my two left hands. Um, that is nothing compared to sending an engineer out for three hours trying to, uh, to get Windows on there. So I think on this one, it sort of the solution ticked the boxes. Security is another big, uh, big topic. Uh, I was greatly helped there by uh, a survey from Cal that provided a good picture of, of the ATM industry's view on, um, on security. Uh, I think Cal is a software solution provider. They interviewed sort of 300 to 400 banks. And I'm sure Irina will talk about more later on because she is from Cal. Um, and I don't want to sort of step on her toes on that. But the feedback from two-thirds of, two of the industry is that more can be done when it comes to ATM industry. So 25% 25 of, of the respond thought it was secure. And this is what I believe, I think if you're sort of moving it in the cloud, uh, you get rid of um, the PC, that's sort of the, the key to, to emptying the ATM. I think once you've broken that, once you have malware that can sort of infiltrate the PC, that's the end of it. If it's cloud-based, obviously, you can put the security in new places. Now, for us to look forward, uh, one of the questions we should ask, I think PC may be seen as sort of, yes, we can do this for the time being. The question is also, I think, how quickly are the cyber criminals catching up? Is it a good idea to have sort of, uh, for us to always take the, the, the oldest version available and try to make that work for another four or five years? Um, is it good to continue with an ATM PC? And that's where I got a, a number of banks saying, well, actually, if this is available, uh, we'd be more keen to use this because we seem to be more flexible and we can quickly catch up with the cyber criminals. Change management. Uh, this one had varying feedback. So uh, one of the banks actually said, well, fantastic if we have something that's app-based. So if, if you have a cloud-based ATM, fantastic. We can sort of port all the, um, all the applications from our mobile channel. We can port this to the tablet. And I think we sort of reduce. We have big time reduction in terms of uh, uh, complexity to, 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 to do new things. One bank said to me, I think we have sort of 10 releases a year with new, uh, new business features. Uh, but we're, we continue to struggle, because once we've done so often, we need to retest all the other things. 
Uh, one bank said, I think we, we're really struggling with this. We, the business wants to have four releases, uh, but I'm only managing two. I've got a software stack, software stack from vendor A, hardware from vendor B, and then when I need to sort of add peripherals as anti-skimming, I tend, from a third vendor, I tend to run into uh, two problems. So I can only just about manage two. Now, look to the future. What is the future going to bring us? There's going to be new ways to pay. Uh, I believe Apple Pay is, was announced to launch in Russia. But I've seen that, for example, in other places that uh, banks say, well, it's fine, you can pay with, with uh, mobile. Uh, but a lot of consumers more or less expect that this can replace the card. So they wanted to work on ATMs as well. Apple Pay is a special one. Tokenization. Uh, good luck if you want to sort of recognize your own card holders, because the, the pan is all scrambled up. So we got new things coming our way, mobile wallets, biometrics, probably in that combination, um, NFC, all those things are, are, are coming on the way. Um, if we have a way that we can sort of manage change a bit better, that's appreciated. And that's where I had, I think, as I said, feedback from the banks saying, I think, yeah, if, if we have this available, uh, we can cut down a lot in terms of, we can cut down the, 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 the time to market, and we can have much more features available from the mobile channel, we can port them to the ATMs. Now, there's another thing that was emerging is, is supplier availability. So if you, if you look at me on sort of the, um, from, let me get this right, from left to right, uh, there are already sort of uh, Android or cloud-based ATMs available on the marketplace. Typically, I think those devices have emerged in the last two or three years. And they tend to be in the stage of, of proof of concept. Um, and I think suppliers are trying to get head around, their head around this and also to, to get sort of some of the, the banking requirements and see what, what, what is the ease of use. Is it really as good as, as we think it is? So Winker has done an implementation where they took a cash dispenser. And I think what the thing with the screen on the top is actually it's a tablet point of sale uh, without sort of advertising the service of, of Igor. But I think you see similar devices on his, on his stand. Um, and that, then I think basically it's an app that sort of runs the transaction. That, in my view, is, is very close to the concept I have in mind. Um, the sort of number two from the left and number three, I think, is from Debolt. One is uh, headless ATMs. So you sort of need to have your, AT, your, your mobile phone close to the blue bit. And that's when you can start transacting. Uh, the, the next one to is, is, is full self-service. Uh, then you have NCR Kalpana, which I think has been around. and I, I'm, I'm sure that's a known one. The one on the right-hand hand is, is yet another headless ATM, again, from the uh, the private bank in Ukraine. So these are sort of um, the suppliers rightfully believe that these are very good things to have. And I tend to agree with them. There's just one minor point, and that's, that's where some of the big deployers, I think, sort of, uh, they, they share the same opinion. Um, the industry has changed a lot with the arrival of sort of um, multi-vendor software, software you can run from one manufacturer, you can run it on, on any ATM, basically. Um, we can't ask the, the manufacturers to actually cooperate when they start innovating. So we, we got to find a way to sell, to, 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 to agree to things like common standards to actually make sure that sort of those good innovations can be tested and proven in the marketplace and then rolled out uh, without banks having to worry about sort of investing specifically and relying on one specific vendor. So how is the industry addressing all of this? I've taken upon me to, um, to do a second study to look, rather than a death study saying, I think, well, what is the future like? I'm testing this concept with, with banks throughout the globe uh, to see if there's appetite from the banking industry. So I think that, that involves me sort of having an interview with banks, um, doing a questionnaire where I sort of explain the concept, talk to the business benefits, and see if they match what the banks have if they match the problems that the banks are, 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 are suffering from. So the project is called Project Adagio, Alternative Design ATMs of Global Interoperability. And that is something I'm uh, s testing with a range of banks. I have commitments from banks in the US, uh, Europe, the UK, um, Africa, and I think one of my associates is going to run around in Australia to get feedback as there. You may have guessed I'm in Russia today, and I think I hope you can sort of take a look at this. Um, and participate in the study. Uh, right now, there's a lot of feedback from the American banks, and I'd like to think that the Russian bank, with a lot of innovation, have also opinions that can drive the ATM industry forward. 
Uh, a second thing that's happening is at the ATMIA, uh, they sort of had a request from Bank of America and uh, Citibank to say, look, we want to change the industry, we want to have more cloud thinking in the industry, we want to have standards. Um, there's a special committee that is inf investigating all the issues that the banks are suffering. And the next step there is that uh, this will result in, in an industry RFI, a request for information, uh, where the banks are saying, I think this is what we want. Uh, vendors, please come and uh, tell, tell us how you can deliver on this. So I'm proceeding while that happens, I'm proceeding with my own thing. Uh, I, I will report back by uh, Christmas, and I'll announce the findings on an ATM I conference in uh, the US. And I hope, obviously, that the organization would like, uh, welcomes me back so I can talk around, talk around it uh, next, next time this year. Um, so in essence, cloud ATMs, the future is nigh. I believe it's all going to happen. Uh, but there's qu quite a bit of work on the way. And I believe the industry is doing good efforts. And I, I contribute where I can. On that note, it's a pleasure being here. Spasiba.